Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. All praise is due to Allah. We thank Allah. And we ask Allah for his help, his aid, his forgiveness and guidance. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own selves and from our evil deeds. Whomever Allah guides, no one can misguide. And whoever goes astray, no one can guide but Allah. We bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah and that Prophet Muhammad is his final messenger. Allah the Almighty says in the Quran, chapter 2, verse 194, He says, And fear Allah and know that Allah is with the pious. He also says, O you who have believed, fear Allah, regard Him as He should be feared and regarded, and do not die except in a state of submission. Before we proceed with today's topic, I would like to summarize some of the points. We discussed the past few weeks. We have been talking about proofs and evidences that point to the divine authorship of the Quran, the Book of Allah. Some of the points that we have discussed so far, and I will just mention the points because they have been discussed before is that, that the style of the Qur'an was totally different from any other literary work that the Arabs knew about. Actually, one of the most characteristic things about the Qur'an that strikes anyone who listens to it or reads it is that it comes in the first person. The one who is talking is Allah himself, the creator. It's not like a narration about a second person or third person. It is the first person speaking, him Allah Azza wa the Most High. That is something that is present in the Quran that you will not find in any other sacred book of any other religion. Also, the Quran, as we mentioned last week, does not reflect the common knowledge of that time or the culture or the environment. We talked about this in some detail last time. We also discussed that the mode of compilation and authorship of the Quran is also different than any book in history because every book is compiled chapter after chapter or topic after topic while the Quran is a book that was authored in form of verses revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, based on certain situations and circumstances that occurred during his lifetime, talking and dealing with all these different problems and questions and giving answers to these conflicts or problems that arise as people live their life. So a verse would come revealed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, for a certain event and is placed in one of the chapters in a certain place between this verse and this verse and so on for 23 years but then you find it at the very end as one whole unit as if it was authored in order but it wasn't revealed in order it was not revealed in that order the order that it came to be at the very end is totally different from the order of how it is reve uh, revealed step by step <clears throat> We also talked in previous talks about the impact the Quran has had on its followers and on humanity at large, not only at that time, but till this day, the impact the Quran has on people, regular people. Many people have actually embraced Islam just by reading the Quran. Many people were totally against this religion, but the moment they read the Quran, in detail without any bias and understood its content many people have come to Islam just by the Quran without anyone else calling them to Islam it has a tremendous impact on a human heart and has had a tremendous impact on the face of the earth it has changed the face of the earth from the time it was revealed till now and it continues to be the most embraced book as Islam continues to be 
the fastest growing religion because of one thing, because of this Quran. And that is one of the miraculous things about this book. Also, what we stopped on last time was that the Quran did not reflect the language of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as his prophetic sayings, which we have preserved as well, are totally different in style and language compared to the language, language and style of the Quran. And any Muslim today can re realize and recognize the difference. Actually, some people have conducted studies comparing the two and have found something that's very interesting. They have found that 60% of the words used by the Prophet Muhammad in his sayings, in his prophetic sayings, are not in the Quran. And that 60% of the words used in the Quran are not in the prophetic sayings of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, showing you that it's two different persons speaking. His sayings are his sayings, while the Quran is a saying of his creator, his Lord. Also, the level of knowledge in all the subjects that the Quran has discussed, just the mere fact of discussing almost every topic and touching on every topic that concerns humanity and almost every science that human beings will engage in throughout history, that's a miracle in itself. But the level of, of knowledge contained in every topic the Quran discusses does not reflect the level of knowledge of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu who was unlearned or the level of knowledge of his whole era or even the level of knowledge till, of humanity till this day. And that's a totally different topic that we would have to discuss separately. To compare the knowledge contained in the Quran and the statements and facts it has given compared to the knowledge of that time and the knowledge of today. And that the Quran has surpassed and excelled and it tells us things that we only discover today. Or it tells us about historical facts in the deep past that were totally lost and unknown during that time, were only discovered over the past hundred years through ex excavations and manuscripts. That is how they come to know these pieces of information and they found that they are mentioned in the Quran. Also scientific facts that are contained in the Quran, talking about this worldly life and the worldly sciences, we find references in the Quran from that time that are only being discovered these days. The level of knowledge, that's a totally different topic and that's a huge one. Even talking about the future, the Quran talks in many instances about things that will happen in the future and they come to pass just as mentioned in the Quran itself. That is a clear sign that the author of this Quran and the origin of the Quran is the creator who knows the past the present and the, and the future. Also, we discussed the fact that the Quran does not reflect the personal life and the emotions and the concerns of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The last example we gave when he concluded the last talk was his wife, which was, who was so beloved to him and lived with him for 25 years. And we find no mentioning of Khadija, his wife, in the Quran at all, while other wives of other people are mentioned in the Quran, such as the wife of the Pharaoh. She's mentioned in the Quran. We find that Mary, the mother of Jesus, she's mentioned in the Quran, and there's a whole chapter in her name. We find that the wife of the prophet Lot and the wife of the prophet Noah are mentioned in the Quran, while the wife of the prophet Muhammad himself, who lived with him 25 years and died, and he mourned her death and always remembered her, he, say, he remembered her in his sayings, but no mentioning in the Quran. Another example of the fact that the Quran does not reflect, reflect the person of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him himself, does not reflect his emotion or his personal experiences or his, his, his concerns or fears or ambitions, is the fact, look at this. He had, during his lifetime, eight children, four sons and four daughters. Imagine that all his four sons died during his lifetime. And all of his daughters, except one, also died during his lifetime. You can imagine how much grief and how much pain and how much suffering he went through and all the memories of his children. Now, I challenge anyone to bring me a single mentioning of a single son or daughter of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, peace be upon him, in the Quran. You won't find that. You won't find it at all. <clears throat> While... You see, the Qur'an does speak about some children, but not the children of the Prophet. You'll see the Qur'an talking about Moses when he was a child, correct? 
and in the cradle and how he was saved from the Pharaoh. You'll find the Quran talking about Prophet Joseph, Yusuf, and how his uh, siblings conspired against him and he was thrown in a well and how he lived. But no mentioning of the children of the Prophet Muhammad himself. You will find Quran talking about Prophet Jesus when he was a child, when he spoke and when his mother brought him to his people and the miracle when he spoke in a cradle and that, that is how he declared the innocence of the Virgin Mary at the time and so on. But no mentioning of the, of the children of the Prophet Muhammad. We will continue in the second part of this talk. In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. All praise is due to Allah. We thank Allah. We praise Him. We ask Allah for His guidance, for His help, and for His, and for his forgiveness. And we seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own selves and from the evil consequences of our evil deeds. Whomever Allah guides, no one can misguide. And whomever goes astray, no one can guide but Allah. We bear witness that none is, is worthy of worship except Allah and that Prophet Muhammad is his final messenger. As I mentioned, the Quran does not reflect the psyche and the person of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We talked about his wife, there's no mentioning it, uh, of her in the Quran. We talked about his children. Another thing, his companions, his friends, his disciples, even his uncle, many of them were persecuted in front of his own eyes. And some of them were killed in front of his own eyes. A price they had to pay for being perseverant and steadfast on this religion and following the Prophet Muhammad. The fact that those people actually sacrificed his life and they knew this person very well. They knew the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that he was truthful and honest. It, it speaks about the deep conviction they had that this is the truth and that this is an honest prophet. For them to sacrifice his life for this message, that is the, a huge testimony to the truthfulness of the prophet Muhammad. And that they knew that there was no sign on this man whatsoever to indicate that he might be lying to them or that he's an imposter. He was a true real prophet and that's why he had this such, such an impact on them and on us till this day and on humanity till this day. No liar can have such an impact on humanity and his followers such as what the Prophet Muhammad had. You don't see the Quran talking about the persecution and the killing of those companions and disciples and friends and family of the Prophet Muhammad. You don't see that. Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, peace be upon him, he grieved so much for the killing of his uncle because his uncle was killed and mutilated and he was crying for that. For a long time he grieved. But still, you don't see the mentioning of his uncle in the Quran, not even once. While you see the mentioning of the persecution of other people. Who are those people who are mentioned in the Quran that they were persecuted? The Israelites. The Israelites. Although, the Israelites of his time were opponents to him. They were his rivals. But he talked about, the Quran talks about the persecution of the Israelites and how God delivered them from the Pharaoh and how God gave them victory and how God gave them all these blessings. Imagine this, although they were at the time not in good standing with the Prophet Muhammad, as we all know from history. And we see the Quran talking about the persecution of the followers of Jesus. We see that. Qutila ashabul ukhdud. Surat al-Buruj, you see that when, when the Quran talks about those people who were placed in a trench and they were lit on fire and they were followers of Jesus according to the narrations that, we, that have been delivered to us. While the persecution of his own people, his own followers and his own family and his own self is not mentioned in the Quran. How can the Quran be the product of the Prophet Muhammad? It cannot be. Definitely cannot be. Also, normally, if somebody is a liar or an imposter or seeking some worldly gain, he would seek to venerate and elevate himself and just talk about himself. You don't see that in the Quran. You see the Quran only expounding on the exaltation and glorification of the one creator and expounding on his dominion and authority over his creation and that everyone has to bow down to this creator and follow his commands. 
So this tells you who the author of the Quran is. If it calls you to this one creator who we have not seen and will not see in this life and that we have to follow his law that goes in many instances against our own desires, still we have to follow. That tells us that this is his book. God, Allah, is mentioned in the Quran in every single verse, the 6,323 verses or more in the Quran, you will find Allah is mentioned multiple times, either in his name Allah, Ar-Rahman, the Lord, Al-Aziz, Al-Hakim, the Almighty, uh, the All-Wise, the All-Forgiven, the All-Merciful. You will find his name mentioned in almost every single verse multiple times. While Prophet Muhammad, how many times is he mentioned in the Quran? Four times only. But even when we compare the Prophet Muhammad to other prophets mentioned in the Quran, just one example, Prophet Moses. And again, the followers of Prophet Moses at the time were not followers of the Prophet Muhammad. They were against him. How many times is Prophet Moses mentioned in the Quran? 136 times. 136 times compared to four times Prophet Muhammad is mentioned. So no one can come and tell us that this book is not genuine from the Creator. Also, normally if somebody is just trying to gain a big following, he would promise his supporters and his followers victory in this life and that they will gain so much in this life and status and ranking and so on, dominion. He, di he, didn't, he didn't promise any of that at all. When they used to ask him, when they came and pledged allegiance to him and embraced his message, they said to him, and actually they started talking amongst themselves, and one of them stood up and said, before they shook hands with him to make this pledge, a man from this tribe, the Ansar, the supporters, stood up and said, hold on, O people of Ansar, means supporters. He said to them, do you know what kind of pledge you are entering into? He said to them, if you shake hands with this man, then all of Arabia will be against you. They will be against you and your families and your wives and your children. Are you ready? Are you ready to take this kind of pledge? and stand alone in the face of all of Arabia. And then beyond Arabia, there was the Persians and the Romans, of course. Not yet to come. The challenge came later. But they were surrounded by enemies from every direction. So they said to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, so what will we gain if we pledge allegiance to you and embrace this religion? He said to them, paradise. That's all I can promise you which is a promise that it will not take place in this life. People die. We don't know where they're going, correct? So he's not giving them any material promise that they can see in front of their eyes in this life. He says, all I can promise you is Jannah. Look at this verse. Chapter 46, verse 9. Allah says to the Prophet Muhammad, Say, O Muhammad, I am not an innovator or a new prophet or something, a new phenomenon. I'm just a messenger like the previous messengers who have come before me. Nor do I know what will happen to myself or to you. So Allah is clearly telling him that to tell the people that my fate and your fate lies in the hands of Allah. All we have to do is follow the commandments of Allah and believe in him based on the evidence, of course, because in Islam there is no just blind belief or leap of faith. We don't have that. We have evidence why this religion is from Allah. How come this religion, how come this book is from Allah? And that's what, what, we, what we've been discussing and what we will continue discuss, to discuss, inshallah, God willing. So here, Allah is telling him to tell the people that I'm a messenger like the previous messengers. What will happen to me or to you, I do not know. And then he says to him, tell them that I only follow that which is divinely revealed to me. And I'm purely a warner. So, from the sum of all what we have discussed so far, we can sense and feel intuitively and instinctively that this book is from the Creator Almighty. And not just because of what I mentioned in this talk, it's because of many other points that I've mentioned before and we will continue to mention in other talks. We will conclude our talk with this and we'll continue this topic in the coming weeks.